It's been a long road from Oguashuku to Geneva. From the days of Queen's School, Enugu, the days of Challenge Road, Ibadan, classes at St. Anne's on the Hill, lessons at ISI, the days of simple beginnings, of breakfast, of bread and butter, lazy afternoon siestas of evenings with kerosene lamps and stories of nights filled with the music of crickets, with the music of Bobby Benson. If you marry taxi driver, I don't care. Growing up in the middle class home of two lecturers at the University of Ibadan, walking through the local market between Baskets of tomatoes and bunches of plantains, the call of the bus conductor in the background, the smell of home in the air. It's been a long road from Oguashuku to Geneva. From having to leave your homeland at a young age, as a teenager, carrying in your heart memories of the cluttered black towns that raised you, missing the food, Missing the music, missing the family and friends, missing the smell of dust in the Hamatan winds, the colors of Christmas, the chaotic warmth of extended family, enduring now the cold of many long winters, enduring now the social distance between next door neighbors in cosmopolitan cities of the West, experiencing what it is to stand in a crowded subway train and still feel alone. It's been, it's been a long road from Aguashupu to Geneva. From the days of struggling to master the mannerism and languages of a new culture, of standing at the door, knocking patiently, waiting for admission, yet defiant in your quiet resolve not to give up entirely your cultural identity in the desire to blend in. And so you hold on to your accent fetched from the waters of the River Niger. You hold on to the kinks that the Almighty God in his infinite wisdom put in your hair. You hold on to your pride in menalin. You hold on to your pride in your polished black skin. You hold on to your fabrics. You hold on to your name, Ngozi. As a daughter, as a princess of Anioma, you hold your chin up. Even when sometimes you hear people sneer in the background, you don't look back, you look forward with fortitude and focus, determined to prove them all wrong, not with your words, but with your accomplishments. Like this, you hold on to your dignity. It's been a long road from Oguashuku to Geneva. From the days of waking up every morning to the limitations imposed by stereotypes of what a girl can do, of what to expect from a person that walks into the room wearing Ankara, with a string of coral beads around her neck, with her hair in braids. It's been a long road from Oguashuku to Geneva. From the countless days spent in libraries, grinding your way through college, through your masters, through your PhD, the countless nights spent studying, babies in one hand, books in the other, determined that no matter how little sleep you get tonight, from changing nappies and feeding babies, no matter how little sleep you get tonight, you will show up at work the next morning with a perfectly placed ghillie and a glint in your eyes that tells anybody looking that you are here, not to make up the numbers, that you are here to compete, that you are here for business. It's been a long road from Aguashuku to Geneva. From the days of showing up at your desk, every morning, through rain, through storm, through blizzard, through snow, walking your way up from step to step, from level to level, juggling the responsibilities of keeping a home with the realities of what you must do to advance your career, to pursue your dream, to meet those needs within you that cannot be met by the love of a supporting husband or the gratitude of well brought up children as unimaginably precious as these things are to meet the needs within you that they cannot meet. The days of grinding through seasons of delay and denial, bouncing back from disappointment, 
of staying up all night wondering if you'll get there, but still getting up in the morning to wear the mask of confidence. It's been a long road from Mogwashipu to Geneva. From the days of having to prove every day that you are deserving of equal pay for equal work, that you are deserving of extraordinary recognition for extraordinary talent, the scars of endless battles, countless conversations, having to argue and demonstrate over and over again that genius is not the heritage of any race, that competence cannot be judged from whether you speak in a European or an American accent, that integrity does not have a state or country of origin, that capacity cannot be read from anybody's ethnicity or religion, that strength of character is not a man, that intelligence is not rooted in your, in your gender, that mothers can work, that wives can have lives that do not primarily revolve around the well-being of their spouses, that women, that's a woman who can, who has time and again demonstrated that she can, should be allowed to lead. It's been a long road from Aguashuku to Geneva.